Okay, so hello everybody and welcome to tonight's webinar. My name is Beth Mazza. I'm an Arbonne Independent Consultant and a District Manager. I'm very excited to be hosting this call tonight with the wonderful Jeremy Fisher. We have a lot of information for you. If you don't know me, I just, uh, I'll give you a little background. I uh, work as a freelance makeup artist and I've been doing that for a few years. My family also owns a coffee shop full of pastries and coffee and donuts and bagels which I work at during the week while my kids are at school, which makes the cleanse even that much more interesting <laughs> for me. Um, I found Arbonne through having Bell's Palsy and meeting Katie Linden, and ever since then, it has totally changed my life. I'm sure you've seen my before and after pictures circulating through the different groups um, last year, getting chosen for that 90 day evolution challenge um, completely changed my life, and that is how I, became the um, the the cleanse girl, I guess you can say. Um, and yeah, so tonight I'm going to really be uh, talking a lot about um, the how, because that's uh, my area of expertise. And Jeremy, um, he'll tell you a little bit about himself. He just is full of knowledge. So um, I'm going to pass it over to Jeremy so you can introduce yourself and tell him a little bit about you. Can you hear me okay? All right, great. Well, my name is Jeremy Fisher. I'm an executive district manager with Arbonne. And uh, I really started to be a health and wellness coach and get really involved in that probably when I was 25. I'd also had a similar health condition. Well, not similar, but one that made me start to look at alternatives. Well, I had ulcerative colitis. And, you know, at that time, I thought I was going to die. I didn't know what was going on. So I had to start, you know, going to the doctor like, you know, I normally would or anybody would at that point. And, uh, they basically told me I was going to have to be on medication for the rest of my life. And that really didn't sit well with me. So I started doing a lot of my own reading. Uh, this is really before the internet had taken off. So I didn't have as much information at that point. But when that came around, I really started to look into it much more and was able to get myself off of medication and really found my passion in doing so and wanted to help others um, to really just help their life and, and be more, uh, I guess optimal and have a more optimal life. So income Arbonne and my wife had started at first when we were looking for clean skincare because we had the food piece down, uh, but really, really looking for something that we could implement with our children because that really sp sprang forward my interest in health and wellness because through my training and learning and uh, getting involved in something called epigenetics, I really knew that I didn't want my kids to have my bad genes passed on to them. So that really created the interest and the ability for me to, to say I wanted to go after my passion, leave my job that I was at, and really look into how I could impact the health of myself, my family, and others as well. So Arbonne really helped and was the vehicle that catapulted that for me and allowed me to do a lot more with it. Okay, thank you, Jeremy. I know we're so fortunate that we have so many people on our team that know so much. <laughs> Okay, so just um, a quick pointing out of, of things. There's really two groups of people possibly on this call and watching this video. Some of you have just started your 30-day cleanse today. So yay, that's very exciting. I know I started today. Some of you will be starting January 11th. Um, I just want to um, make a quick note. If you haven't already seen Katie Linden's um, December 28th recording that she did as the um, kickstart, you're going to want to watch that. The links will be in Happy Healthy Awesome, or you can ask your Arbonne consultant and they can get it for you too, um, because that's a great you know, uh, prequel to this um, webinar. Uh, let's see. One thing I want to say, if it, today is your first day, you really want to take your before pictures. I know that it was traumatic for me to take mine. It took three days and a lot of crying because I kept telling my husband he was doing something wrong. <laughs> As it turns out, that is what I looked like. Um, but I guess I just didn't realize it at the time. Looking back, I'm so glad I have those pictures. Um, and measurements and weight. Uh, for me, measurements were huge, huge, huge. Uh, it's not always about the scale. There were weeks the scale would budge like 0.2, but four inches would be gone. So it is so worth it to also take your measurements. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now is bring up some slides. Jeremy's going to just do, again, a quick overview. Um, for those of you that have already seen it, it can't hurt to see it again. I know that every time I, I see it, I, I learn something new. And then um, we're going to go into some other great info. So I'm going to bring that up, Jeremy, and just make sure you can see what you need to see. 
That's it. Okay, so actually, can you go back to the uh, gluten? We'll start there. There we go. All right, because I know a lot of people, I've seen the comments online, you know, asking, can I have my Ezekiel bread? What about gluten-free bread? I think bread is the biggest uh, question I'm seeing right now is what I can have. And uh, we really want to stay away from any kind of gluten. And I know a lot of people think that the Ezekiel bread is better, but it still does have gluten. And we're trying to get rid of and eliminate all these inflammatory foods. And although that it is a sprouted grain, it still has uh, the gluten in it. And one of the things that we kind of look past when we're looking at uh, wheat, rye, and barley uh, is the lectins. And lectins is something we really want to get away from as well because that's going to cause a lot of issues as far as our gut as well. So it's not just the gluten that's found in wheat, rye, and barley, but we want to stay away from the lectins and the gliadin. And so you see down here the couple of the uh, quotes from Dr. Tom O'Brien uh, where they had the Medical Journal of Neurology showed 70% of unrelated migraines went away completely on a gluten-free diet. And one I want to point out is the uh, Journal of Attention Disorders had all 12 markers of ADHD reported by parents and children significantly improved after six months of gluten-free diet. So what I want to really look at in that sentence is the six months of gluten-free diet. And why that's important is if you have elevated um, antibodies to gluten, then it actually takes a minimum of six months for those antibodies to die down. So we want to make that keep that in mind. I know this is a 30-day cleanse, and you're going to feel great after just, I'd say, four days to a week of being without gluten, and you're going to be able to have a lot more cognitive performance and function from your brain because you're going to have more blood flow going to your cerebral front cortex, which is where your learning uh, part of your brain is, and you're going to be able to think clearly. So for me, when I went off of gluten, my brain fog that I'd had for years and years went away dramatically, and my ability to learn uh, and soak in and absorb what I was reading or listening to was, was just incredibly amplified. So that is one of the big ones, and I know everybody's wondering, what about gluten-free bread? Uh, Katie has pointed out the yeast that is in the gluten-free bread is something we definitely want to stay away from as well. So with that said, hopefully everybody you know can go the, the 30 days. It is one of the toughest things to get rid of, and that's really because of the gluteomorphine that's in that that sends signals to your brain that tells you you got to have this. We actually can be um, addicted to this uh, as well as some of the other things that we're going to be talking about next. So go ahead, slide in dairy. Dairy is, dairy is one of those things that we can also be uh, addicted to, and that's because the caseomorphine in there is also a neurological drug that we get stuck on and we feel like we have to have. You know, it's like when we have cheese, and it's like we can't just have a little bit. We want a lot of it, so we can't stop eating it. Uh, that's because of those caseomorphines that are in there. So you see a lot of the issues that are going on with dairy uh, contributes to acne, so uh, for sure, skin issues can go away off of dairy-free diets. Uh, whey is going to be found in most protein drinks, and it's a major contributor to intestinal toxemia, which is the uh, undigested food particles in the intestines, which leads to an overgrowth of bacteria. Um, and you can see the intestinal toxemia can lead to irritable bowel syndrome or even Crohn's disease. Um, most cows are treated with antibiotics, and uh, the RBGH, uh, vaccine, which is something that helps the cows to produce two and a half times more milk than they normally would produce. So that can also promote breast cancer, as you see here. The slide, that, or the uh, Save Our Bones comment on here, uh, the countries with the highest consumption of dairy have the highest rates of breast cancer and osteoporosis. This is something that, you know, the milk industry doesn't really share with us because they say you have to get your calcium from somewhere. Well, you can see here all the way from the uh, sesame seeds and the broccoli of how many grams of calcium you actually get from real food. Um, if anything, we're getting too much uh, calcium. So we want to make sure that we are having the right nutrients to go around with that, like the vitamin D that you see pictured here, because they have to work together with each other in order for the calcium to go where it's supposed to go, which is your bones and teeth is where we want it to. So we're going to get rid of that for 30 days. Uh, corn and soy, uh, if 
if you have any processed foods, if it's in a box, if it's in a bag, more than likely you're going to see corn and soy. And the reason we want to get rid of these um, is because they are mostly genetically modified. Corn and soy are the top two food sources that are going to be genetically modified. Um, and it's they all have a lot, especially corn, of different code words and names that you'll see. So they're not just high fructose corn syrup. It's also found in breads, yogurts, nuts, salad dressings, canned fruits, ketchup. Uh, so you can look for the corn flour, the corn starch, dextrose, corn sugar, vegetable oils. Um, and I like the quote that Katie has up on here from Michael Pollan. Uh, if you are what you eat, and especially if you eat industrialized food, as 99% of Americans do, what you are is corn. Uh, it's a great documentary. He wrote about that where he traveled the country trying to find food that didn't have corn, and it was almost impossible. Soy, I think a lot of us have talked about that. Um, it just contains phytoestrogens that mimic the effects of estrogen. Uh, they are mostly genetically modified as well. Um, one serving of soy can actually alter a the hormone by 7%. Um, so we want to stay away from that. I see a lot of clients that have a lot of Hashimoto's or uh, not as much have Graves' disease, but these phytoestrogens can really hinder performance of your thyroid. Uh, and then I do see an awful lot of hormone imbalances that you know really are affected because people are getting way too much estrogens because they're found in just about everything now from your plastics that we drink water out of, even the PVC that's in our walls that our water travels through. So we want to limit that as much as possible. Let's okay. See. Thank you, Jeremy. See, I love how much information. Um, I will say too, when you're doing this cleanse, one thing that does make it easier is really understanding um, understanding what the foods do to your body. Uh, for me, it was a, a huge challenge to even start it, but knowing what it was doing to my gut, what it was doing to my brain, um, that made it easier to not want the foods as bad. Uh, I am going to just talk to how there are really two groups of people that are doing this. There are people that just have, um, you know, maybe just want to feel better, maybe figure out what food sensitivities they have, um, maybe lose a couple pounds. And then there's the group of people that are cleansing that, you know, have maybe 10 pounds or more to lose, you know, have 50 pounds, 60 pounds, um, are really looking for a drastic uh, change to their lifestyle. So um, on that note, I do want to point out when I was cleansing, um, and again, all of this is on Katie's original webinar, uh, I did incorporate the Evolution products. And that is not to say you need to do that to lose weight on the cleanse because you will lose weight um, even without those products. They're just an extra tool. Uh, the um, Thermo Booster, you know, helps to speed up your metabolism through heat and the um, Full control is just something you drink before your meals, and it helps uh, fill up, fill you up. It expands up like to like 200 times its size in your stomach, and stops the absorption of sugar. And those were just two extra tools. Um, so just something to keep in mind if you are buying the 30-day package, that is a discounted item. Uh, the other thing um, that we were coached on through the cleanse is that you really want to eat only when you're hungry. Um, I know a lot of times, you know, you're either eating because you're bored or you're eating because you think you should be eating. Uh, as long as you're getting the nutrients, um, you, I wasn't told that I had to snack. I snacked only when I needed it. Um, but at the same time, you need to make sure if you're doing two shakes a day that those shakes are filling you in our meal. And I just saw a post in Happy Healthy Awesome earlier today um, where someone mentioned incorporating the avocado or the nut butters, um, the healthy fats that does help fill you up. For me, I did use um, almond butter in every shake. I used flax seed. I would add um, some chia seeds sometimes. If I exercised, I did add fruit to them um, as more of a recovery. Uh, but if not, I wanted to eat the fruit rather than put it in the shake. Um, for me, too, because uh, a lot of people, you know, you get the package, you don't even know where to start. I actually do a scoop of chocolate and a scoop of vanilla in each shake because I find that it hides the greens better because I put the greens in there. Um, truthfully, I'm not 
uh, one of those people that can say, I can do it because it's good for me. <laughs> I have to hide the flavor. Um, but I do it because it's good for me, but it's not an easy thing. So I put the Digestion Plus in my morning shake. Jeremy's going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. I would add the fiber. I would add a half a scoop of greens to each shake because, again, you have to figure out what works for you. And it also helped me to add more water to the shakes. I put 12 ounces of water in my shakes, and it made them more filling and just a little bit bigger which was really helpful. Um, and again, I just want to emphasize, you, you want to be full when you're done with it. You don't want to be starving. Um, so Jeremy, if you could really quick uh, talk a little bit about the Digestion Plus um, and the GI issues. Oh, you got to unmute. There we go. I know that you like to add yours in with a shake, and that's great. I know my wife does the same thing. Um, but if you're looking for optimal performance, if you were to take those 30 minutes before a meal, it's really going to help to enhance the absorption of that meal and speed the utilization of your proteins. So you really want to take those in. The digestive enzymes, you know, we all talk a lot about the prebiotics and the probi probiotics that are in there, but the digestive enzymes are something that most people are lacking, and especially when you get to uh, age of uh, my age, 40 years old and older you lose the ability to produce those digestive enzymes and they are remarkable at how they allow you to absorb the food that you're getting in. So the fats, the proteins, the carbs, the sugars, you know, these things are things that you really need. And if they're just passing through you and you're not taking in those nutrients, then, you know, you're not getting your bang for your buck and you're wasting a lot of food there because you're eating clean food, especially this week or this month. So you really want to try and do that. I know some people don't like the flavor. I've heard people that will use the greens and the Digestive Plus or the, together, and it kind of uh, balances each other out. You just kind of take it like a shot. So I figured, hey, if some of you could take a shot of tequila, you can take a shot of greens and probiotics. Um, I've taken things that were uh, very nutritious for me that helped me out a lot that would probably make a billy goat gag. But I took them because – they were great for me and I could tell an immediate difference. Thankfully, they changed some of the uh, flavors on those things so I don't have to do that anymore. But, you know, you do what you do or have to do sometimes. But those are nowhere near as bad as that and I can actually handle them. So, But some may not and that's fun. Okay, and then um, I know we get a lot of questions regarding the sugar in the shakes. Uh, so if you could also yeah, explain a little bit about that. Yeah, so the sugar in the shakes, can you hear me now? Okay. The, we have nine grams of sugar in the shakes, and a lot of people look at that and will question it, but uh, I don't think a lot of people understand the difference between pure cane sugar and regular sugar uh, or a guave syrup, which was touted as the next big health sugar, and everyone should use that instead. Uh, the difference is the amount of glucose and fructose that are in these types of sugars. Uh, pure cane sugar is actually made from, you know, cane sugar. Um, if it doesn't say it's pure cane sugar, it's made from sugar beets. And sugar beets are going to be highly genetically modified. And they're going to be grown out in the Midwest. And that's something we really want to stay away from. So uh, nine grams of sugar is actually going to be less than uh, one Granny Smith apple, which would normally or average has about 10 grams of sugar in it. Um, a banana has 14, so you actually don't want to take a half a banana and start adding in to your shakes and things of that nature. The only time that I would say that you want to do any kind of uh, fruit of that nature, uh, probably not on the 30 days, but as if you have any kind of sleep issues. So you might want to take your carbs or something like that at night because it's actually going to help your liver store glycogen. And you're going to use liver glycogen as opposed to muscle glycogen, and you're going to get a much better sleep uh, starting out. But that's something that you would probably rather take a tablespoon of honey to do because it's going to be 22% more effective than fruit. But Again, we want to stabilize blood sugars, and that's not something we're looking to do this time uh, during the 30 days. But afterwards, that's a great helpful hint for you if you do have any kind of issues falling asleep or waking up in the middle of the night. Okay. Um, and the other thing uh, that we need to also point out is that you do want to make sure that you are eating food, real food, um, two shakes a day. But if you need to snack, you're eating food. And one of your meals should be a substantial meal. And I know um, Jeremy's actually going to mention something about the guide in a minute. Uh, but your plate should be, you know, half veggies. And then I believe it's a quarter protein, a quarter of the healthy starch. And then 
some fats and Katie and I know our group is typically a bigger advocate for more fats than even the plate says. Um, but it's not about counting calories. It's not about measuring. It's about, um, your really just your, your ratios of your food on your plate and to make sure that you are eating a, a one really good meal. So go ahead with that, Jeremy. Yeah. So I know this, what differentiates our bond from other, um, cleanses, I would say, is our ability to look at and say, you know, this isn't like the answer to everything. You really have to eat clean. And we go through and we teach people how to do that. And, you know, with the newest sciences out there that people are talking about. So fats are incredibly important. Um, you know, most vitamins are fat soluble. You know, A, E, D, all these things need fat in order to get to the receptor sites and work into your cells. Um, so we really want to focus on a lot of healthy fats. So Katie had asked me to talk about MCT oils. I know a lot of people had some questions about that. Um, and the calorie counting, we don't have to do that. So with this program, there's no calorie counting. You just eat and you eat good, clean food, just real food. So if it grows or if it's been uh, raised in a humane way, that's what we're kind of looking for to complement, you know, this program and these shapes and the fiber and the, supplements that we're taking here so you know I can hand you like a handful of almonds and I can hand you a, a handful of candy both would have the same calories in it the calories in calories out method from the 90s has been debunked and we're not really following that anymore you know one's going to be more nutritious and you know it doesn't take a rocket science to figure out which one's going to be more nutritious so you really want to look at nutrient density um, on the other hand you know, I can give you a glass of water and I can give you a bunch of multivitamins and it's going to be completely nutrient dense, but it's going to have zero calories. Well, calories are a nutrient that you shouldn't be without. You have to have calories. So there are no calorie counting and you don't have to worry about that. As long as you're eating real food, then you're fine. Um, as far as the MCT oil goes, a lot of you um, probably look at the back of your coconut jar and it says it has 62% you know, MCTs, which are just medium chain triglycerides. Um, these are going to be a great fat to help fill you up. But the thing you really want to look for is, uh, and there's a lot of trickery involved in this statement of the 62%, because there are four types of MCTs. Um, there's C6, which is not something you want to really go after, but it's in high demand. And then there's C12, which is uh, mostly what that 62% is. And it's probably been relabeled incorrectly 100 years ago when it was discovered. Um, it's actually a long chain fatty acid. The optimal um, strand of MCT is going to be C8, and that's the caprilla strand. So if you see that on the back of the jar, that's the optimal oil to go for. Usually it will be a liquid at room temperature. It doesn't go solid, has no flavor. But once you add it to your vegetables, this healthy fat, will bring out the flavors so much more uh, robustly. It's incredible. Um, and it helps your brain to work, you know, with sending ketones. So we're not just working off of glucose. We're using ketones to really work efficiently so that we can focus on basically everything we've got going on in the day. So, and then it helps satiate you. You're not going to be, you know, wanting a lot of food because you've got these healthy fats. So when you look at, you know, the, types of food we eat, it's going to fall into three categories. It's either going to be a protein, a carbohydrate, or a fat. Well, carbohydrates and proteins all raise insulin. The one thing that does not raise insulin is going to be fats. So yeah, half your plate should be great green leafy vegetables. Uh, this time of year, they're in abundance. You can get them at the farmer's market locally uh, and just chow down and just throw a ton of butter on there uh, or ghee. So I know you're or the MCT oils. And I know you're probably thinking, if you haven't heard this before, well, didn't he say to get rid of dairy? The difference between butter, um, and I'm going to say and state very clearly, I'm not talking about organic butter. I'm talking about grass-fed butter um, from pasture-raised cows. This is going to be highly different than, you know, your country crock that you you know, most people are used to. You want to look for this, and you can get it even at Walmart. Uh, Kerry Gold uh, Silver Label is a salt-free butter that you can add in. Pour on top of your vegetables. It's going to taste great, so you don't have to deprive yourself of good food. Uh, put it on your meat, whatever you want to, and load it up. 
Um, the butyric acid is going to be fantastic for your gut, um, especially for helping balance out the uh, good gut bacteria that you need. And, you know, I really want to say that if you were counting calories, you would say 70% of your calories should be from a healthy fat. So the difference between butter and ghee um, and getting away from dairy is during the fermentation process, the uh, beta case and morphines uh, go away during this process. So these are the things that you, you know, want to stay away from, and they're not going to be as present when you go to grass-fed butter. Now, if you have a lactose intolerance or you still have an issue with that, then ghee is the way to go, and most people can take ghee without any problems whatsoever. Um, and we could talk about the right meats to get, uh, the right vegetables here. Uh, do you have anything that you need to add to what I'm saying, or am I on the right track, Beth? No, no, I think you're definitely on the right track. Um, the grass-fed butter uh, component is is huge because, yes, we are told no dairy. Um, I will also say that if it's grass-fed cheese, that's not okay. It's just the grass-fed butter because we get that question a lot. Um, but, yeah, it's uh, it, it's delicious, and it will make your food uh, taste great. And then in terms of the um, meat, if you just want to quickly um, run through something there, because I know people are always wondering when they're shopping – what to look for. Yeah. So I know uh, Katie had mentioned something about chicken and how we want to limit that to one or two times a week uh, where most people are thinking, you know, chicken, I've always heard that's like the, the best leanest meat to go for and what you should look for. But again, we want to look for high quality fats. So grass fed, grass finished meat, if you're going to eat meat is the way to go. Um, whereas chicken, you know, is not the same thing you know, species as it was 100 years ago. There are certain breeds that you can look for, heritage breeds, there's foghorns, there's Rhode Island Reds, uh, there's the way that they're raised, whether it be pasture raised, which is, you know, the term you should look for, I know we've, we've all heard free range, but that could be a minimum of two square feet for living space for those animals, as opposed to one square foot for just a regular caged animal whereas pasture raised is a minimum of 100 square feet of living space. So you really want to look for that where they're out scratching in the dirt, in the grass. They're looking for um, bugs, worms, some, you know, they're carnivores. They actually will eat snakes. You know, that's what's lacking in the chickens that are around today is where they've been bred to be bigger, faster growing um, animals where actually – um, one thing that came out from a paper from poultry science was that if you were to look at a chicken and look in the terms of a, a human, uh, if a baby was born at six pounds, six ounces in two months, it would weigh 600 pounds if it was a chicken the way they grow them now. So it's pretty scary. They're young. They have no flavor whatsoever. It's mostly water uh, because of the food they be, have been given, which would be you know corn, soy, grains, which have no flavor. And chicken will actually take on the taste of whatever they're eating. Um, but even regardless of that, if you were to take a heritage breed chicken and feed it nothing but coconuts, the fat that that chicken would produce is still going to be polyunsaturated fat. It's going to be high in omega-6, omega-9. And we want to bounce. We want much more omega-3s. So we want to stay away from that as much as possible. But like I said, there's a balance. And you actually do need 6s and 9s, but you don't need them in the quantity that we're getting so you want to limit that to a minimum of two times a week, if that makes sense for anybody. And you want to go and find it locally. You want to talk to your farmer, ask them the practices that go into how they raise uh, and treat their animals because it makes a huge difference in the taste. Yes, thank you very much, Jeremy. I, um, I, I didn't even know a lot of that when I was going into this last year, and I – you know, I just was kind of guessing until Katie helped me along. Um, in terms of products that you guys got in your kit, um, in the fizz and the tea, some people will combine those products and make what you may have seen on our Facebook page called a tizzy. Since we're cutting caffeine out, the energy fizz and the tea, um, you know, it kind of can give the effects of a cup of coffee. I typically um, put my fizzies in water. I actually like them diluted a little bit. The less water, the stronger it's going to be. So if you really needed that that energy, I would say um, use less water and, and drink it down. For me, it forces me to drink more water. So I put probably one in 32 ounces and do a couple a day. And the tea, um, I do it first thing in the morning and then it's great before bed 
because of all of the amazing um, like cleansing properties in it, it really also helps you. I mean, if I have it at night, I do not feel as hungry in the morning and I don't know why. I'm sure there's a reason, <laughs> but uh, it really does um, do something to you that helps helps you in terms of hunger. Uh, Jeremy, the seven day cleanse, if you would uh, just explain why we do that. Because the other thing guys, um, the guides, I know there's people from different countries. The guides are different based on country guidelines. We um, we use what, what we use. So the information that you're getting in Happy Healthy Awesome that's coming from Katie, and you know Arbon and and the way that we're putting it out there, that's the best way um, to really do this. So if you have questions, that's where you uh, really want to go. Um, and even the seven day cleanse, I know it says something different in the guide uh, versus what you know the health and wellness experts in our group say to do. So Jeremy, if you could just explain that. So yeah, the cleanse. I know like you know some of the guides state that yogurt is something we want to go with, and there can be clean yogurt, but you know, that would be, you'd be really hard pressed to find it. So we want to stay away from that. The seven day cleanse is something I think the guide will say you start on week one. So hopefully the people who are starting today did not start that. We recommend that you start that at the beginning of week three and we'll go over that a little bit once we get to that time period. Um, and the reason we do that is because, you know, as you start to break down, you know, your fat cells, they start to rupture burst the toxins that those fat cells are holding in start to free flow through your blood. So not only that, a lot of the endocrine disruptors that your fat cells have been holding will start to move around and it starts to send a signal to the body to release obesogens. So it's kind of like a page out of the book of life's not fair. You start to lose all this weight and then all of a sudden your body says, Oh, hold on a second. We need to grab these things back up and hold on to them and you start to gain weight back again. And this is another thing that differentiates our bond from everybody else is cellular cleansing. So once that two week mark hits and you start to lose weight for most of you and these uh, free flowing toxins start to go around through your system, we want to grab a hold of those and really transport them out so that you can continue to feel great and lose weight uh, and get rid of them. And hopefully, those things that are going into your skin, you've made a choice to change over and not adding them back in as well. So whereas Arbon has a fantastic, you know, unlimited supply of anything that you would ever use, you know, consume, or soap, shampoo, conditioner, makeup, you name it, we've got it so that you're not adding those things back in after you do detox. Okay. So now we are onto my area of expertise with the cleanse, and that is um, how to survive it and what's going to happen. So um, if you're starting today, uh, you've made it through your first day, which is amazing. Um, for me, at last time I did this, it was about day four where I looked at my husband and said, this is the point that I think I would quit because I had, you know, I had gotten the, the physical cravings were pretty much gone, but my head was still not there. Um, and I always say, and I'm sure if you've seen me in videos before, I was overweight. Uh, for a long time, probably like 12 or 13 years in between having kids. And uh, so it was, it took me a longer time than 30 days to, um, to teach myself how to, how to have the, the right habits and the right outlook at food. And this time around, I'm going into it just trying to get healthy. I have lived my life probably 95% on the cleanse for the past year. I lost the weight in six months and then I maintained it for the next six months. And now I'm ready to, you know, jumpstart and, and, and clean it up a little bit again. Um, but so getting through the first week is going to be huge and your body at that point is not going to really be involved. It's going to be everything that you're thinking in your head. And one of my favorite quotes is whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Because so often we tell ourselves, um, I've been eating pizza my whole life, or in my case, I'm Italian and my family ate these huge meals and how could I give that up? Or I just can't do this because I've been overweight and I like to drink and I like to eat and I can't do it. Um, I had to change all of that. And that's why I've, I'm a huge proponent of vision boards. When I wanted to give up or not work out, I'd walk by that and, and remember what it is I was working towards. I really just wanted to be a healthier person um, and the weight loss was the exciting part that happened, but ultimately I needed to get healthy. Um, and I will bring up, uh, just, um, you know, before and after picture, if for those of you that haven't seen, the, uh, can you see it, Jeremy? 
Okay. Um, this is the picture that really shows the the weight loss um, and just the change that occurred uh, in in the you know six months time. Um, what I will say is when this picture was getting passed around the internet um, when I when I sent it out to you know fellow Arbonne consultants. I was kind of traumatized because I had hid that before from Facebook for so long, either good camera angles or hiding behind my children. Uh, and it was very difficult for me to see. But now looking back, you know, I look at the, the girl in the pink shirt and I think about, you know, the courage that it takes that all of you are taking to make the decision to either, you know, just get healthier, feel better, or make a huge life change like I did. Um, you know, that girl, she was pretty amazing because in a time where she thought that it would be impossible, she just persevered and, and kept going. So instead of looking at that picture, like I did for so long, almost ashamed and embarrassed that I had let myself, you know, get to that point. Now it's, um, it's completely different. And I, you know, I have to commend everybody that's on this webinar because you are you know, making a positive choice um, for your life and your health. And it's just, you know, it's just absolutely amazing. Um, um, what else do I want to talk about? Um, the the mental struggles that you know you'll you'll have. It's perfectly normal, um, especially if you have been eating a certain way for so long, because you're cutting out a lot of um, a lot of things. So that is why our Happy Healthy Awesome group is so um, happy, healthy, and awesome. Because uh, we've all been there and we're all going through it. And today I'm three hours of sleep going to my family's coffee shop and not having a cup of coffee. Uh, it was not easy, but, you, you know, I, I did it and now I'm here. And that's that's my big accomplishment of the day that I stuck to it and I didn't, didn't have that coffee. Um, and we're all here to support you and help you. And, you know, if you're starting on the 11th, I hope that this call has helped um, get you really excited. And if you started today... Um, I'm right there with you. And um, I think that's all of that I really wanted to say. Um, for shake recipes, we do have some on the website. But if you needed to know, like, uh, you know, how I did something or, you know, feel free to ask um, in terms of how I took the evolution and how I did my shakes and my meals. Um, and uh, the other thing I will say is, if you have a lot of weight to lose, um, expect a pretty hard detox to happen. I remember calling Katie and I said, oh, I think I have the flu. I don't feel so good. And she was basically saying, you know, the poisons are trying to get out. So drink more water and it's going to be, it was, it was, you know, there was a rough time. Um, the, my favorite thing that I did when I did this is I videotaped myself every week uh, talking about what I was experiencing that week. So it, it is a great um, idea to, you know, to journal or to, um, to no either. hold on one second. Let me just, uh -oh, hold on. I'm just trying to mute it. Hold on one second. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. I just wanted to make sure I muted it. Um, so journaling about your experience, how you're feeling, what you're going through, um, that is helpful. Um, and again, taking the before and afters will be really helpful. Uh, Jeremy, before we wrap it up, do you just want to talk about um, cleaning out your kitchen and just getting yourself set up for, you know, for winning in this battle? Sure. Um, uh, hopefully you've already done this. You want to get rid of all the uh, snacks and things that uh, you would normally go after, um, you know, because you will have cravings and it's going to be uh, easier to reach for the thing that is going to be healthier and it's going to get you past that instead of old reliable. Um, not to mention, you know, you only have a limited amount of willpower through the day. Experts will call it, you know, um, decision fatigue where you go through and you're making decisions on what you're going to eat and you're making great decisions. Although if you're continuously doing that all day, you can start to make bad decisions in other parts of your life, whether it be work, you're getting cranky and aggravated at your spouse or loved one. Uh, so you want to make sure that you're stocking the shelves and the refrigerator with healthy foods and you're getting rid of those things that uh, really were addictive and causing, you know, issues in the past. So if uh, maybe you don't want to throw all that stuff away, go 
give them to like, you know, a loved one or a neighbor somewhere down the street and tell them they'll give it to you for the next 30 days at least. Um, it would be the best thing. So I did see some pictures of some people who were getting rid of their chocolate bars a day. That's pretty awesome. I'm sure the kids were upset at that because they had three kids. So that's uh, that was incredible to see. So for sure, make sure you look at that. And I know we, we're probably going to go over the uh, cost comparison okay. sheet now just to show people how you can actually save a lot of money this month. And I know that your trash and waste going out of the house will be significantly smaller as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, for me, my husband and I both did this together. Um, and everybody kept saying, how could you afford it? And when we looked at what we were spending, you know, when he was going out to lunch at work or we were getting takeout or we were buying alcohol, um, it actually ended up being um, a savings for us to both do this every single month. Uh, and this just shows uh, for those of you that are thinking about starting the 11th or, you know, if you... It, it's super fun to do this with someone else. So if you had somebody that could join you and, and be a support for you too, um, you know, if you can show this to them, it, it just breaks it down what people spend on things. Um, and they think that it's a lot to do this. It really isn't, you know, it shows you what Starbucks protein box is four ninety five, and then the average daily cost for our 30 day wellness. And it, it does vary in different parts of the country, but $6 and 25 cents. That's, you know, that's, that's nothing if, if you ask me um, in terms of what I was spending before. Uh, so what we're going to do now, as long as um, Jeremy's all set, we can open it up guys for some questions and answers. If there's any questions you have for either Jeremy or myself, you can unmute yourself by clicking on the little microphone. We must have covered everything. <laughs> okay, this is Helen. Um, hey, Helen. Hey, hey. Um, I have a couple of uh, friends here. We're actually a group. Here we are. Hi, guys. Hi. Um, we have two questions. Uh, you had one? Yeah, well, I had one about the olive oil that we need to get because I'm finding it difficult to find that. Go ahead, Jeremy. Well, there are different brands and i know katie's posted some issues or some uh i guess the issue with how to get clean olive oil was not loaded with different oils um and, and basically fake so i can't tell you where you could find it uh, i can tell you where i found it if you're local to here um, or maybe even send you some links via uh, email to uh ohioexpress.com has got some great olive oils he brings them in from italy um, he knows the people, ships them in, and I think October, November is usually harvest time for olive oil, which is the freshest and tastes incredible. Um, so I get that in. I've got someone else at the farmer's market who imports it in from Italy, and uh, there's a lot of testing done on it. There are certifications that you can look for on the bottle that's stamped, um, and right now I don't have those certification numbers to mine, but I can definitely, if you're on the Facebook, post it on there. Um, and let you know what that is. Uh, you really you want to look for a dark colored glass that's 100 percent olive oil and make sure it's inspected. And usually you can tell by the smell, uh, the taste, the flavor. Now different olives will have different flavors of like you know some are peppery, some will hit the different notes in the back of the throat. Um, it's really complex as wine is over in Italy if you talk to those guys who grow it. it, it, it the real stuff is amazing and will make you feel amazing. One thing I will say is when you are using olive oil, do not cook it in high temperatures. And I know you've probably seen uh, the cooking network talk about, you know, how they always use olive oil for cooking in high temp, but I'll tell you that will denature it and it'll make the oil taste horrible. So if you're going to cook in anything, use grass fed butter, coconut oil, uh, and MCT oil, high quality. I use the same as what uh, Katie was talking about and that's bulletproof and you can get that on bulletproofexec.com. It is kind of pricey, but the stuff is amazing and is fantastic for your health. So I will send those links out on the Facebook site. Hopefully you have those. If not, then we'll email it to you through Katie. 
Yeah, the MCT oil is um, delicious and it doesn't really have a flavor. So it's weird that it tastes as good as it does, but it's great for making your own salad dressing when you're on the cleanse too, with a little, you know, fresh lemon and rags, vinegar and the MCT oil. It, it is delicious. And that is, the website is fairly quick. It comes from the West, maybe Colorado area, Jeremy, and it, com it comes in pretty quickly. He's out of Vancouver, Canada. Oh, okay. uh, his company, uh, they import from, uh, I think, Seattle area. Okay. Washington. Okay, Helen, did you guys have another question? Yeah. Um, are there um, any of the Arbonne supplements that we cannot have on the cleanse? Now I'm talking all the vitamins, the um, uh, immunity booster. No, I was able to have all of it on the cleanse. And it actually, it helped me and even one of my clients taking the vitamins. Um, when I was cleansing, it made a huge difference. Today, oh. I made sure I took them, but I took all the vitamins and um, the immunity boosters. And um, when I was, you know, being monitored by Arbonne, there was nothing that I couldn't have. I just had to go easy on the fit shoes. <laughs> oh, so you can actually have fit shoes. You can. I was allowed to have a couple, um, you know, it, two of them would have been the snack. So I preferred like an apple or eggs or something a little more substantial, but I was allowed to have them uh, just again in moderation. Like Katie says, it's sugar. And um, I have a problem with moderation, so I do try to stay away from them. <laughs> the, the fit shoes are good, and I recommend no one do more than two at a time. Yeah. They are fibrous. They're actually made with a brown rice syrup, so they break down very slowly. Um, but they are candy, and they need to be treated as such. So for sure, if you do have sweet cravings, one thing that works great for people is if you were to get some essential oil, a peppermint oil, and just – put a dab on your tongue, it will curb your sweet cravings very quickly and you're not going to be wanting to have that and you'll have great smelling breath as well. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anybody oh, else I'm have sorry. any questions? Yeah. Like I want to add that Peter McTraver actually formulated a lot of our vitamins and nutrients so they work synergistically together. So yes, definitely take the supplements. Um, I highly recommend the omega threes. They're incredible. Um, so many of our products are the herbal colon cleanse. If you haven't done that is phenomenal as well for most people. Um, just great stuff. Yeah. And I also should point out too, um, if you're starting the cleanse today or, you know, in a couple of weeks, um, everybody is different. So you may or may not need to tweak certain things, um, to go easier on your stomach or, you know, um, different, different people, you know, may require different things. Like I had scoop of fiber in all of my shakes. I, doubled up on my fiber. Um, not everybody's stomach could handle that. You know, um, I know certain people have sensitivities to too much red meat and, and, you know, just, uh, as, as you're eating stuff and that's why journaling is great and you see your body reacting a certain way, um, you know, jot it down and then, it, you know, reach out to, to the group and, and somebody in there will be able to help you. For sure. I would definitely say limit your, the amount of ounces of meat, to probably no more than six ounces. If you think about you know meat having six to seven grams of protein per ounce, um, and how much a you know a hundred and sixty pound person needs probably seventy to seventy two grams of protein a day, you're getting you know if you're drinking two shakes, that's forty grams there. So how much protein do you really need uh, to where it starts you know turning into ammonia? You want to get the clean you know, healthy protein from our shakes and then limit the amount that you're having with your meals and really focus on getting those, you know, phytonutrients out of greens and the, and the great healthy fats on those. And then, you know, a nice small portion of, you know, red meat, whether it be lamb, grass fed, of course, and finished, uh, or beef or buffalo. If you haven't had that, it's incredible. Any other questions, guys? Okay, so I think we're ready to wrap up. So thank you everybody uh, for jumping on. And if you're watching the recorded version of this, thank you for watching um, and keep going and anything you need, we're all, um, oh, hold on, we have a question. Bernadette, do you have a question? I was having some logistics issue. Uh, real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I can't it fast That's enough. That's okay. Um, um, the probiotic that I had today almost made me gag. What is the minimum amount of liquid? Because I kind of put it in a 20 ounce bottle of water. Oh, yeah. Oh, the probiotics. Well, that's yeah. what, um, 
I put mine in my shake um, because I can't, that's what, he, you know, um, Jeremy was saying, ideally you want to drink it, shoot it down. And I think it could even be the, the, the smallest amount is four ounces of water. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jeremy, to throw the digestion plus in no, four okay. ounces. I, I can't do it either, Bernadette. So I put okay. it in my shake. And um, as long as you drink it quickly and don't let it sit, you're not, it's not going to you know, break apart or, or so I've been told. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jeremy on that, but you just want to drink the shake, uh, pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, I can't do it either. So I understand. I wish so, I could, but I can't. <laughs> did it, did you really take, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Did you take it by yourself or by itself or did you mix it and you just have like a adverse reaction to it or? Oh no, no, no. I first mixed it and took the first swallow with the Thermo booster, the the pill oh, okay. that you're supposed to take with your meal, <laughs> and um, it made me gag at first, and so then I ate it with my salad, and I was drinking it with my salad, so I just need to really just drink it now, not drink it like I'm just having a beverage with water. I mean, I think you just need to go back to like your college days and how you'd be partying on Saturday <laughs> night with like a glass of tequila and just shoot it down is the best way to take okay. it. Four out, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to know what was the minimum because I think that 20 ounce was too much. It was like, uh, what's the minimum I can do? Yeah, okay. I've done it in four ounces and survived, but I think I still gagged a little bit. Okay, okay. And with the meat, you were saying limit chicken. So what is another good meat? Uh, is well, fish good? Well, yeah, well, the right fish. So, um, you know, if you can do like okay. sardines or great and high fat, uh, Haddock, uh, salmon is great, but you want to make sure it's wild caught. Um, you can Google search, you know, farm raised fish and see what they feed those and what they swim around in and what happens. And most are genetically modified salmon, especially now. So you really want to always look for wild caught fish. Um, salmon is a great one. You want to look for, you know, fatty fish, but you also want to make sure you stay away from fish that are going to be high in mercury. So tuna or shark and things of that nature, you want to stay away from. Okay. Um, then again, you know, grass fed, grass finished only as far as lamb, beef, buffalo, bison, you know, things of that nature. Okay. All right. Good see. <laughs> okay. Anybody else thinking of anything? Mrs. Helen, I have another Beth? question. Oh, sure. Go ahead, Helen. Oh, sorry. Um, tell me again about the sardines. Well, they're very high in fat. Uh, they're very, very good for you. If you can handle them and people like them, it is, it's an incredible healthy fat. You know, pile up on them. They're, they're amazing. So they come in cans, right? You can get them in different ways. Some of them are encased in salt, and you can put them in like a liquid and do different recipes as far as uh, rehydrating them. Um, or you can get them in cans, but you want to make sure, of course, that it's a, you know, there's a lot of different issues and things to look for as far as in a can. Of course, you want to make sure it's from a clean source. It's a BPA can. Uh, what are they packing the sardines in? What kind of liquid is it? Is it like a, so a soy-based oil, which is a lot of times is. If you look at, say, even canned tuna, a lot of times you'll see that it's going to have water is, is what you think's in there, but then they put a lot of gelatinous garbage in there that's not good for us, and a lot of those times, it's soy oil or other things of that nature. So you really want to look for a clean source um, for these type of items and really read the label good because there's a lot of trickery involved as well. Okay. And do you happen to know of any sardines, canned sardines that are, are good? My wife <laughs> hates fish, so I never get to indulge in it. Um, okay. <laughs> but so no, okay. but, but I can find it for you if it helped you out. So I'm sure... Um, a lot of the shopping I do is off of Thrive Market <laughs> because I can get things for super cheap and they may have something in there and they have, you know, a great resource where you can read up on the products as well. Okay. You'll post that on, on the Facebook? Sure, sure. Thank you. Thanks so much. Okay. Was someone else asking a question too? Yes. This is uh, Shelby Marbury. Hi, Beth. Hi, Shelby. How are you? Um, hi. Good. How are you? Good. Um, I just, I had a quick question. Um, I think the biggest struggle for me, and I don't know if I'm sure other people relate is more of combating the mental, being mentally hungry and kind of choosing 
not to snack when you're not hungry. And more for me at night is my difficult time. And I kind of just want to, you know, relax and eat. And it's definitely more of an emotional thing. So I don't know if I know you kind of said that that's something that you struggle with and was a contributor to your weight gain. And I just was wondering if you had any tips as to how to kind of combat that. Sure. Um, what I always say, uh, too, for people that don't know me, like food consumed my life. Like it was such a big part of everything. And I actually counted today that I've gone for like 369 days without real pizza or a bagel or a donut or a glass of wine, (laughs) (laughs) which is amazing. It's, it is truly amazing. Um, but that just says, you know, of what this plan does because it totally corrected my head. And that's why, um, if you can just get through the, the early days where you are breaking those habits because those habits are not mm-hmm. easy to break. Um, I was very much a boredom eater. I still am. Yeah. And, and that's what I have been doing. Again, I haven't been doing it with the wrong foods, but I have definitely been eating too much, um, which is why right. I have to be cleansing again. Uh, but yeah, just uh, that's why the vision board or something to remind you of what you're trying to do in your face. Like mine is the... Um, my new vision board is the background on my phone. So every time I look at my phone, it's there mm-hmm. uh, because just the reminder, cause it's very easy to get lost in your daily activities and forget. Yeah. That, okay, I have this goal. I I'm, I'm doing this. Um, so, and, and just to think and be like cognizant of every choice you're about to make with food and not let it just mm-hmm. happen. Um, that, that really helped me too. And at night, You know, I would, uh, the first week, I think I was in bed at like seven o'clock. No joke. (laughs) You're like, get me out of the kitchen. (laughs) Because it was like in my bed, it it didn't make me want to eat. So I went upstairs Uh and put on like my meditation music and just sat there. And I was, and that is so not who I was last January because I always say, guys, trust me, a year ago, I never thought I would be like doing something like this and being someone who's helping people get healthy. I never mm-hmm. thought this would happen. So it, it's a miracle. Um, but I tried the whole meditation thing last year and I sat there just thinking like, just don't do it. You, you want to be healthy, that mm-hmm. is what you know, and the mantras and just repeating that I had a client, um, and I told her every time she goes to the bathroom, I want her to think about like, I can do this. I can do this because when you're drinking all this water, you run into the bathroom a hundred times a day. So I mm-hmm. said, every time I want you to say, I can do this because it just reinforces because you have to with your head. You have to. And that yeah, was my biggest struggle absolutely. still. Um, you know, it, it. Yeah. So, yeah, anything I can do to help you, you know, shoot out a message yeah. in the group. And I'm happy to do it because I, always say, Guys, I did this. You can all do this. Every single person in the world mm-hmm. can do this if I can do this. <laughs> yeah. I like how you said give it the 30 days mm-hmm. to break those habits because yeah. it truly is habits they can change so thank you so much Beth no problem and for those of you that didn't see Katie's I did emphasize that there too is it I mean you have to put into perspective how long you've been eating a certain way and how long it's going to take to correct that because the 30 days is again great for just a cleanse and and a quick um you know reboot but if you have been you know unhealthy or making poor choices for a long time you know, it is going to take you more than 30 days to, you know, fully correct it and not go back because that is the biggest thing that's happened to me in my life is after the 90 days, I kept going further. And this is the first time I have not gone back. So um, it's definitely worth it. It is, I can't even tell you how worth it it is. Just your mind, your stomach, the way you feel, um, everything changes when you do this type of um, cleanse and detox. And I wouldn't have believed it unless I did it. Anybody else? I don't know. One more quick question. Sure. Uh, the full control, does that have to be taken 30 minutes before you eat? Yes. Even if it's just a shake? Yes. Um, and they said 30 minutes for me, and they didn't want it to go more than 30 minutes um, or really less. You, you really want to do it right around the 30-minute mark because okay. of what, it, what it's doing prior to eating. Okay. Okay. Anybody else or Jeremy, anything else? And we'll wrap it up because it's been about an hour. So that way. Okay. I, thank you. I don't want to keep anybody longer if they don't need it. Okay. So again, guys, thank you so much. I'm going to stop the recording. I'll load it into 
happy, healthy, awesome for you to share and, um, you know, reach out for support. That's what we're here for. And I could not be more excited for everybody. Thank you Thank so much. You. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.